So we're here at Mobile World Congress 2016, and uh, who are you? Hi, I'm Nandan Nayampali. I'm a VP of Marketing and Strategy for the CPU Group uh, at ARM. And uh, the, at the same time as Mobile World Congress, is Embedded World in Nuremberg. And uh, over there, there's been an announcement today? Yes, absolutely. So we launched uh, the product called the Cortex A32. Uh, it's a processor that extends the number one uh, processor portfolio for embedded devices. Uh, the Cortex A32 is ARM's first 32-bit only version of the ARM V8A architecture. And so Cortex A32 actually brings a greater level of efficiency, performance, um, and advanced more uh, encryption capability to a market that already includes the Cortex A5 and Cortex A7, two processors that have shipped between themselves over two billion units into the entry-level smartphones, into embedded uh, devices such as single board computers, uh, wearables, uh, industrial devices, and more. So uh, the, uh, the ARM V8 mm -hmm. architecture has a bunch of stuff that can be used on a 32-only chip? Absolutely. So when we announced ARM V8A architecture about th four years ago, we talked about all aspects of it. ARM V8A supports 32-bit and 64-bit. And in fact, it has to support the full 32-bit capability to be backward compatible with the ARM V7. And a lot of the capabilities we added to the architecture are not just available in the 64-bit architecture, but also in the 32-bit architecture. In particular, things like encryption capabilities for a yes, secure hash, things that are really required for a secure authenticate and protect capability that in, is in addition to the trust zone technology that has been in ARM uh, Cortex A-class processors for the last decade. So there's a whole range of devices that, that, that can use all that and that might not uh, want to use the ARM Cortex A35? And uh, is this uh, is that, that's in a very that area? Fair question. That's a very fair question. So what you're referring to is the Cortex A35 processor that we launched uh, in November last year, which was targeted at bringing 64-bit capability to very cost-efficient form factors such as entry-level smartphones, which are very particular about power and silicon die area. The Cortex A35 brings that 64-bit capability while not compromising on uh, silicon power and footprint. However, in the embedded market where the 64-bit software is may not be as critical in wearables, in single board computing, in industrial situations, um, that's where actually the Cortex A32 comes in. It actually further reduces the silicon footprint by 10 to 15 percent, but at the same time delivering the same level of performance for 32-bit code as the Cortex A35, but also being power, more power efficient which is actually really what the embedded market wants, where in some markets the tr transition to 64-bit may take a bit longer. That's why you're announcing it at the embedded world, because it's for the embedded market, for IoT, for what is for wearables, what, what kind of thing could it be? Absolutely, so uh, Cortex A32 is focused on embedded devices, um, and it's actually a market where Linux is coming in, Yocto is coming in, these are all full-fledged operating systems running on it, not traditionally that you see in Cortex M class, really low and lower uh, footprint, smaller microcontrollers. But the Cortex A32 is focused on these embedded devices for IoT endpoints, for uh, wearable type devices, um, you know, internet gateways, uh, industrial control, uh, automotive MCUs. So it, it actually represents a large spectrum of devices that can go into that currently don't all need 64-bit. So how does it compare to the Cortex A5 and A7? Is it like a big bump in performance or? That, that's again a good, very good question. What we've looked at from our market that has been very popular with the Cortex A5 and A7 is they are looking for more performance. So even if we implemented in the same process technology at the same frequency, uh, the Cortex A32 will deliver anywhere from 10 to 40 percent more performance on a lot of standard benchmarks. But then you look at how you're actually moving data around, that goes up further. And in uh, authenticate protect type of kernels which need encryption, you could see nearly a 10 to 15x improvement in performance. 10 to 15x improvement in certain uh, use case? Yes. 
Like, uh, is it security stuff? Correct. It's in the authenticate protect part of uh, encryption. So, uh, how about the market that is using Cortex M? Mm -hmm. Could they be considering using a 32? So I think the market for Cortex-M is still very specific. These are really small footprint microcontrollers that are targeted towards very quick interrupt response time. And that market could be very distinct. However, there are MCUs that are beginning to look at the use of Linux. And one of the key things is, a processor is not the only processor on DAI. You could actually see MCUs, and you do today, where you could have a Linux running on a big, bigger processor like the Cortex A32, but a lot of real-time uh, activities happening on the Cortex M for the always-on, always-connected type capability. So you could see not necessarily a transition away from Cortex M, but it's a complement to Cortex M. And uh, Android could be uh, maybe great for the embedded market too. Indeed, and in fact. A lot of this transition is um, embedded uh, Linux. You can see various distributions. You could have uh, Android, and of course, Android's been very comfortably running on Cortex A5, A7. Full backward compatibility, so Cortex A32 runs it just fine. And you can see more innovation in the embedded market. Today, we believe that we have about 70% of the um, embedded MCUs already. And we feel that with this capability and what we bring to it, that market is growing rapidly, and we have to be a, a bigger part of it. So, uh, when uh, when people uh, when uh, people design uh, IoT devices, mm -hmm. they know exactly what they want. If they want 32 or 64, they would know. Uh, again, that's that's a that's a very fair question. You, what you see is the mobile ecosystem is going strongly towards 64-bit, and you can see Cortex A35 now bringing us into that entry-level range. In the embedded world, you can see long-term uh, projects that may continue with the current ecosystem for a long time. And so those would make the choice of going 32-bit. Those that may see a transition to 64-bit at some point could still choose to use the Cortex A35 and, and have the future proofing. So, does that mean we're not going to see A32 smartphones, or it could also happen? Well, that's actually up to the market. So, one of the things that we always say is, we provide the tools, our market innovates. We still think that the 32-bit uh, entry smartphone may exist for some amount of time. It could even potentially have a Cortex A32. However, longer term, or even medium term, we see that transitioning. Um, I would see the Cortex A32 much more in embedded, other embedded devices. And they all get GPUs optionally, or how does it work? That's actually very dif uh, deferring as well. You could see GPUs in some of the more graphics intensive uh, applications. Uh, you could see, in fact, some of the graphics capability run on a Cortex A32 for the ones that are much more uh, worried about silicon footprint and don't need the serious uh, visual capabilities of a GPU. So you could see uh, different types of applications use, use it in very different ways. Does it fit with Big Little, this one, or? Uh, this probably would not fit into a traditional Big Little model because there's no equivalent 32-bit only big processor. However, you could always use it with an RMVA capable 32-bit processor with only a 32-bit uh, software system and still have a Big Little capability. All right, so it's going to take a bunch of months and uh, we can already see a bunch of devices? So we do expect this to be, uh, at least in silicon samples, uh, by the second half of the year. Obviously, when the products get announced or launched will depend on uh, our customer commitments.